I'm going to try and compress what I learned over literally months of research into one 10 minute video about how to get into Harvard from a future Harvard student. Let's get into it. So I want to start things off by talking about academics because this is the number one question that people have whenever they hear about me getting into Harvard it is always what did I score on my SATs, what did I score on my GPA, what do, what do I need to get into Harvard? I'm going to give you a little rule of thumb but this by no means applies to everybody. The rule of thumb that I like to use is the 1% rule. So if your SAT score is in the top 1%, if your GPA is in the top 1%, if your class ranking is in the top 1%, you're good, okay? Obviously, there's a little bit of leeway. If you're in the top 2%, probably fine. If you're in that range, it's probably okay. Um, but top 1% is where you should aim to be. You don't need to aim to be literally perfect on your GPA or perfect on your SATs or perfect at any of this, right? You just need to be at the very top. Okay, so it doesn't actually matter what you score on your SATs or what your GPA is because when Harvard admissions or when any of these admissions officers are looking at your application, if they see that you're in the top 1%, they understand standard deviation. They know how it works. If you scored a 1540 or a 1550, they know that you could have scored a 1600 on another day. So that doesn't really matter, right? It's just, can this person graduate in four years? And if the answer is yes, it's a check mark and then they move on to the rest of your application. And this is what the bulk of this video is going to be about. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something kind of risky, okay? Everybody that I talk to who has gotten into Harvard, either in my class or in previous classes, has one thing in common, okay? And, and every qualified candidate from other schools, at other Ivy League and top institutions, they all have one thing in common. That is, they're incredibly passionate about something, or multiple things, but they have this incredible fire, this incredible passion, and it's not driven by a motivation to get into a school. So let me kind of try and explain by, by comparing this to my life, okay? Uh, it sounds very self-centered, I know, but I think it'll help. So I love to run. My passion is running, my passion is track and field. It's just, it's, it's a lot to me. It's, it's, I would, it's not everything to me, but it's a lot, right? It's the number one thing in my life. So for me, I've always just pursued running because I love it, right? Ever since the start of grade nine, I've pursued running for, for just the sake of it. I just love to run. I love to, I love the feeling of it. I love the community. I love to be fast. I love feeling better. I love improving over time. Like everything about it, I just love. Right, I love, it's just, it's my passion, right? And that's not motivated by, I want to run fast so I can get into Harvard, or I want to run fast so I can get into a good college which will set me up with a good job so I can be happy later in life. It's none of that, right? It's just, it's what I love, it's what I love to do. And I talk to my other friends who get into Harvard or who have gotten into Harvard. Um, very similar stories, right? It's. Nobody really thinks about it and it has this goal like, oh yeah, Harvard is my number one thing, right? Obviously people consider it along the way, right? Like just like thinking about Harvard doesn't disqualify you, but people pursue things because they love it, right? You need to pursue what you love without letting go of school. If, if your goal is to get into an Ivy League school, you kind of have to forget about that goal and you kind of just have to pursue your life and pursue being just the most interesting version of yourself that you can be, right? This is, this is always what I think when I hear about people who have perfect SAT scores and who have perfect GPAs and feel that the Harvard admissions process is unfair because they got rejected. Academics is only a small portion of your application, right? A lot of it is, are you interesting? Do you have passions, right? I think, one of, the, one of the ways that this was phrased to me um, by someone who was involved in the admissions process is like the question that they're trying to answer is, would you be an interesting roommate? Like if, if I was forced to live with you for four years of my life, would, would I be cool with that? Would I be interested? Are you a nice person? 
Uh, do you have things that drive you? Would you inspire me? And if the answer to that is yes, then they're going to want to let you into the school, right? They're going to want to let you into that community, right? And you're going to want to be part of that community because your roommate is going to be equally inspirational and equally passionate, right? So I think the number one thing by far is to have a passion and not only to have a passion, but to be excellent at that passion, right? Because it's one thing to go into an interview and say like, yeah, I'm like super passionate about baking cookies. Like I only started it like a month ago because I saw this video about a guy who said I need a passion for Harvard, but like I'm super passionate about it. It's like what I want to do. And then like, <laughs> they'll see right through that, right? They'll see right through that. It needs to be something that you genuinely love. Like I genuinely love track. I have a friend who genuinely loves musical theater, which I can't even comprehend, but she does. And that's like her number one thing. That's, that's what got her into Harvard, right? That's like, she spends a week of her, of her year every year in competition mode, where it's just like, you get four hours of sleep and it's like, ah, oh, this is crazy, but I love it. Like, it's crazy, but you know, and it's just like, that's exactly the mentality that you need. You need to be willing to put aside other things in your life, your passion, and pursue it not to get into Harvard because that's a crapshoot, but because you love it and because you want to be interesting. Now, what I mean by, by Harvard being a crapshoot is that all of these top schools have, I mean, it's published online. Like you can look at the admission statistics. What Harvard likes to say is we could fill the class with valedictorians twice over. And I mean, that's true, right? There are going to be a lot of people who are qualified, who are interesting people, who have this academic standing and they can't be accepted. They can't all be accepted. There are only so many spots and it's luck. A lot of it comes down to luck. Now, if you are the top candidate, you're going to be accepted. But if you're just one of the top candidates, then there's a chance that you won't be accepted, right? So you have to understand that, that, that more than likely you're not going to be the singular top candidate. And even that person has a, has a chance of, of not being accepted. Right? The, their interviewer could just be having a bad day. Or they could be having a bad day. So ultimately, a lot of this comes down to luck. And people don't like to hear that, right? Nobody wants to hear that, that their future is luck based. But what I would say, but what I would say to that is that it's not luck that determines your future, it's luck that determines your college. Right? No matter what college you go to. A lot of people had this impression wrong from my video. A lot of people said, oh, you're just like, you're reinforcing the mentality that, of the Harvard elite that you need to be elite to get into Harvard. I, no, like <laughs> a lot of my people that, that I look up to dropped out of university or dropped out of, of high school even. A lot of the people that we respect in our society are people who dropped out of things to pursue their passions and they took risks and it paid off, right? That's the case for, for many people. And I'm not saying by any means that to get into Harvard, you will be, I'm not saying that by any means, I'm not saying by any means that getting into Harvard will make you successful, nor am I saying that the only way to be successful is to go to Harvard. I mean, like for most of my life, I kind of just assumed that I was going to go to the University of Waterloo. That's where I live. That's, that's where I would go. And if I went there, I feel like I would still be successful, right? I don't know if I'm going to be successful at Harvard, right? But I'm going to try my best. I think the other thing is school is only one thing. There are many, many opportunities that pursuing a passion will give you that aren't related to college at all, right? I mean, with track and field, one aspect of it, obviously, is that it got me recruited to Harvard and I was able to, to get into Harvard, arguably because track and field, right? That's my passion. But at the same time, it's, it's allowed me to travel across my country. It's allowed me to, to travel down to America, to run, with, to run with some incredible people, to meet incredible people, to see diversity, to push me to my limits. I've had these crazy opportunities that I never would have had if I chose not to pursue that. And so I would say you, if you're trying to, to get into Harvard, 
you need to find that passion. You need to pursue every possible avenue that you can until you find something that truly speaks to you and then just put it above everything else and just pursue it and take risks and it doesn't really matter if people make fun of you, it doesn't really matter. Nothing really matters except that you are trying to be the best that you can be. And ultimately that will make you successful. And that's the best way to get into Harvard because it's just luck after that. But that's my advice. My advice is uh, be academically qualified, have a passion, and then get lucky. And you can only really impact two of those steps. The third step, obviously you can't impact, but trust me, if you follow through on the first two steps, if you are at academically successful, if you're in the top 1% and you are a passionate person, the least of your worries is gonna be getting into college. You're gonna have plenty of, of opportunities to pursue and you will be a happier person because of it. So I hope that helped. I hope that clarified things a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. I will have more videos about the college process soon. Stay tuned.